So Barita drops its result today, and that's the first half result. So in this video, we will be looking at Barita's result, but before we do so, let me give you some context in which we will review the Barita's results. All right, first and foremost, when you're purchasing a stock or a company as an investor, what you're really purchasing is the equity stake of the company, all right? And what you're paying for the equity stake of the company is the market value of the company. So on the one hand, you're paying the market value. And on the other hand, you're getting the equity stake. And that equity stake allows you to control all the assets of the company. All right, so it is very important to know what you're paying for the company and what you're getting. Now, in Barita's case, Barita closed out at a price that values the company at some $109 billion as of Monday. All right, so you as an investor that is purchasing Barita's stock, you're paying some $109 billion for the stock or for the company. All right. However, the equity stake, what the equity is worth as of March 2022 is some $37 billion. So again, there is a gap of about $70 billion. All right. Or you could say that people buying the Barita stock now are paying a premium of some $70 billion over what the equity stake is worth. But that is kind of understandable, given the fact that companies are viewed as going concern. And what that means is that we're expecting the company to continue to grow over time. All right, so in a sense, you're expecting the equity stake of the company to continue to grow over time. And that is the reason why people are, at times are willing to pay a premium for the equity stake. Because over time, you're expecting the equity stake to grow, to become equal to what you pay for it, and to even grow past what you've paid for it. All right? So when assessing a company, it is very important and Whenever time you're paying, for instance, when you're paying premium for a company, it is now of paramount importance to understand how fast equity stake will grow. All right, so you have to assess how fast the equity will grow, and it takes an understanding of what makes up the equity of the company. All right, so when we're looking at Barita, we will need to look at equity, all right? So we will drill down into the equity stake of the company. All right, so when we assess Barita first, we actually look at the equity makeup of the company, all right? So two things make up equity, share capital or retain earning. This is the Barita's operation that we're talking about. Most of Barita's equity comes from sheer capital or what we call fresh cash, all right? And fresh cash is the money that investors put into the business, all right? So the owners of the business put added capital into the business, so that is fresh cash. And we realize that that is how Barita has been growing its equity, all right? Or that fresh cash is a larger part of Barita's equity. Now, whereas that is important, we want to see equity growing from the retained earning. That is far more important, all right? Because each time you grow equity through fresh cash or sheer capital, you have to give up a portion of the ownership of the company, all right? And that's, that could be a problem. So when we assess Barita's retain earning, in order for the retain earning to grow, to justify this high premium 
that the stock is currently um, selling for. Retained earning would have to grow some 30% for over 10 years before it can actually justify the price that the company is now selling for. All right, so for the company, for management to grow retained earning at that rate, it is almost a mission impossible. All right, so we are not expecting management to grow equity through that mean or the solely through that mean. All right, so it could be that there's a they will use a combination of both where they draw for some fresh cash while at the same time growing retained earnings. All right, so that is how we are suspecting that management would choose to grow the equity of Marita in order for them to justify this high price that the, the stock is going for. So that is the reason why we suspected that Barita will come to market for some fresh cash. And we predicted about two years, that was from last year. So our prediction is that Barita in two years time will want to come to market in order to get some fresh cash into the business. But there's another route by which the company can actually grow its equity stake. And that is through using a lot of debt on the balance sheet or using more debt on the balance sheet. All right. So as I said, if the company is using more fresh cash, taking more cash from the owners or adding more owners to the business, then the company might have to other present shareholders might have to sell off some ownership of the company. So present shareholders might not want to go that route. So the other route is to add some creditors to the company. All right, so start borrowing more money. So in that case, the company will have more money to use. And when they work that money and make, um, and make some profit on that money, then that money will be retained and go towards helping retain earning growing to the 30% that is needed to justify that high market value. The problem with this route, this credit route, is that it will add a lot of risk to the company. All right, so we will assess whether or not the company is using a credit route to grow equity or using the retained earning to grow equity or using fresh capital to grow equity or is a company using a combination of all three. Another thing that is important is the ROE, that is a return on equity. That is very important. Now, the model that we use, the value barita, is a very simple model that uses the ROE as a very important input into the model. Now, when we valued Barita, the ROE that justifies this $100 billion market value of the company is a 30% ROE. At the time of the IPO, the last APO, I mean, when the that the company raised, ROE was 17.5%. That is a far cry from the 30 from the 30% 30 that the company needs in order to justify the high price, the premium price. So we will want to look at the ROE to see if the ROE is growing towards that 30% or is it shrinking and falling off? Because that would mean that the company is not achieving its goal. One thing that we'll find very, I wouldn't want to say important, but very sinister, which we believe is quite immoral, is Barita's using some tricks and trades in order to sustain that high price of one 
hundred billion dollars of the company's value. And it might seem to a lot of people that this isn't a crime or it isn't suspect, but somebody is losing money. Somebody has to pay for this action and it is the poor employees that have to be sustaining this high price while at the same time it is the poor employees of Barita who are putting in the work to reach this goal to, to justify this high price that management choose to put on the company and let me tell you how everything falls back on the employee. And this is why I said it is quite immoral. Barita has what they call a employee stock ownership plan that they use to compensate the employees for work that is done. And they said it is a plan that is used to motivate the employees. All right. But any plan there is, is employees compensation so it is a part of the employees compensation that they are using to purchase barita stock for the employees but this is where the immoral activity or the immorality of the act comes in now they are using employees compensation to purchase an overvalued stock. And we saw where they purchased some $1 billion worth of Barita stock at $101. And the other day we see where some other employee, some management purchased some more stock using the same stock ownership plan. Now, what I'm saying is that this is employees compensation and they're using it to purchase an overvalued stock rather than looking for real value and purchasing or giving stock to the employee that are undervalued that will increase in value over time if you truly want to give your employee value all right so this plan is used to keep the stock price high, but it is the employees who will bear the brunt of not having their compensation being used to add value to them. So currently, Barita is selling at about $90. So that 100, that's about 10 or 11% different from the one hundred and one dollar that they purchased they use the employees plan to purchase a stock at so there's a falling back of the price which is the employees that are hurting from the whole ordeal so we are looking at barita's six months financial statement ending march 31st 2022 all right so this is a quick overview of the achievement of the company for the six months and you can see where net profit is 2.3 billion dollars we want to compare that with last year all right net operating revenue was 4.6 billion dollars shareholders equity has grown to 37.5 billion dollars total asset is 100.9 billion dollars uh, the company has an efficiency ratio of 40.7 and the return on equity, which is one of the figures that we want to look at is 13.5%. All right. And we said that return on equity, return on equity supposed to be 30% in order to justify this $100 billion market cap that the company is currently going for. All right, and we'll see where return on equity is just 13.5%. So that's a far cry from where return on equity should be.
Now we are looking at the chairman's report and basically the chairman gives an overview of the macroeconomy, all right? And he, and he speaks a little about the strategy of the company and the, the fact that the company is prioritizing liquidity, all right, in, in this present environment. So the chairman speak about the high inflation that is rackling the global economy, all right? And they finally realize, our central banks final, finally realize that inflation is not transitory. All right, so this inflation seems like it's more a long-term inflation. And as a result of that, central banks right across the world have inflation as their main priority, all right? So inflation, keeping down inflation has become the main priority of most central banks. So we can see where they're increasing infl um, interest rate right across the globe in order to tame inflation. All right, so as a result of this, the, the, the management of Barita suspect that liquidity will get squeezed, all right? And liquidity, both locally and overseas, will now become an issue, all right? And as a result, they, they now start prioritizing liquidity. So management wants to keep the company very liquid, and that is as a risk mitigation strategy and also as a growth strategy where they can now take advantage of lowly priced asset in this environment management also speak about the ukrainian and the russian conflict and the re-emergence of supply chain issue that has now taken a different turn due to the zero tolerance policy in China, all right? Capital allocation into alternative investment, all right? So this is one of, or this is the strategy of Barita's operation, and we will get into this some more, all right? As the, the company is allocating a large amount of its resources to alternative investment so as to give its client exposure to these types of investments. So that's a growth strategy for Barita. These are, these are the policies that will govern Barita's alternative investment strategies and we will get into those in more detail so let us look at the company's operating performance we'll see where net interest income all right net interest income increased by 30 percent and this is as a result of the company expanding its group credit and fixed income portfolios all right so they have emphasized fixed income portfolio and credit portfolio and as a result, net interest income increased by some 39%. Non-interest income, this grew modestly just by 7%. And what is of importance here is that investment banking is a part of this um, line item, right? And remember now investment banking, the company recently started doing investment banking when they took over the operation from Rita Humphrey. All right, they added the investment bank in harm, and this is supposed to be one of that, one of, one of, and this is supposed to be the growth harm of the company. In other words, the investment banking harm is supposed to drive the growth in Barita's operation. And we see where non-interest income, which incorporates investment banking, grew on the 7%, gain on investment activity, all right, fees and commission is a part of that also, and forex trading and translation, all of that is a part of non-interest income. All right, now let us look at operating expense. Operating expense grew by 18%, and staff costs is a huge part of this increase. So staff costs increased by some 23%, administrative costs up by 22%. All right, so you can see where the costs 
is having an impact on the company's result because these costs are growing at a faster pace than some of the company's revenue streams. And as a result, net profit for the first half of the year increased only 11%. All right, so net profit came out at $2.3 billion relative to the $2.1 billion in 2021. All right, so Barita is supposed to be a growth company. This is not looking good for a growth company. All right, so the question must be asked, has Barita plateaued? All right, has the growth in Barita's operation plateaued? No, Barita is strategizing or they're in the strategizing phase of a new venture all right so they want to do the alternative investment thing so we want to look at that strategy in more detail to see whether or not that will be sufficient to drive the growth in the company so as to justify this high market value of the company and that is what we are interested in all right so net profit has not grown to the level that we are we are expecting to justify barita's high market value so let us look at the company's balance sheet or we'll see where total asset increase some 22 percent or sorry 28 percent or by 22 billion dollars all right and a huge part of um, total asset is their pledge asset and their marketable security that makes up some 73 percent or those two line items make up 73 percent of the total um asset now pledge asset is where the company has bonds or some other securities i will put these assets in some safe account um by the central bank or with some other financial institution and then borrow from those assets. All right, so we talk about the different ways that the company can grow its equity. I would say that the company can grow its equity by retained earning or by fresh cash or by adding more debt. And this is one mean of the company adding debt. The pledge asset that the company has on the balance sheet is always a debt security. So the company keeps the company always secure those those assets and borrow against those assets so the company is adding debt and the new strategy that the company is entering this alternative investment harm of the company uh, will do a lot of this same strategy right where they're adding debt to the balance sheet and we will look at that as we get closer to that Loan receivable increase from 37% to $10 billion. All right. Uh, we're seeing, and let us look at how the asset side of the balance sheet was funded. I was where total liability increase from $13 billion. All right. So most of the increase that we're witnessing in total asset is coming is due to total liability. And that has increased from 13 million dollars are some 26 percent and majority of the liability is repurchase agreement all right repurchase agreement increase on 20 percent now what we know is that repurchase repurchase agreement is one is a very expensive mean of borrowing money and this might be the reason why the net income has not grown as fast as it should, all right? So Barita is really borrowing money at high interest rate due to the fact that repurchase agreement is a huge part of its total liability. All right, so total equity increase from 30% or just by $8 billion. So total equity increase from 31% or by $8 billion, all right? So we see where, again, the total liability is increasing faster than total equity. So this tells us that the company is leveraging up the balance sheet. All right, so this seems to be one of the strategies that Barita is using, all right? And we spoke about how the company will need to grow the, um, the equity and liability 
increase in its liability seems to be one route of doing just that. Now we also expect that Barita will draw for some fresh cash sometime in the near future. All right, so we still have that expectation because we're not seeing anywhere where on anywhere on the financials where Barita um, will grow exponentially to judge uh, to justify those I P E and book value. Now, as we said just now, the equity grew just eight percent. The equity grew. As we said just now, the equity grew by 30% or by $8 billion. And if you look at the equity on your screen, what you realize is sheer capital is a larger portion of equity. So equity is now valued at $37 billion. And $33 billion of that is just fresh cash that was put into the business. All right, so Barita, now the retained earnings is, is only five billion dollars coming from four billion dollars all right so we are seeing where we're seeing where retained earning increase of nine billion dollars we are as a retained i'm sorry we are seeing where sheer capital increase of nine billion dollars we are return earning increase only one billion dollar so again this is proof that the company is using fresh cash to grow its equity as we suspected rather than growing the equity through retained earning all right so the strategy of the company is to use fresh cash added capital to fill that 70 billion dollar gap that we talked about and to also use liability or to leverage the balance sheet in order to fill that $70 billion gap that we talked about.